The Workflows console is what we call the interface you use to build your workflows. In this lesson, we'll take a look at a few simple guidelines you can use to stay organized and make sure your flows are readable and easy to work with. In the world of software development, naming conventions are often critical because using these conventions makes identification more efficient. Ultimately, you want to be able to look at a name of a flow and know exactly what that flow does. Let's look at some common naming conventions that you can employ when naming your flows. Using prefixes to group flows together. Using numbers to help with sorting. Making flow names descriptive enough to help with filtering. By using these techniques, you can easily maintain a sorting order. Enhance readability. Easily organize child flows. Provide room for versioning if you want to preserve your previous flows. It's also worth noting that you can toggle between different views in the upper right corner of the workflows console and change their sorting methods as well. Sometimes you'll have flows that are triggered by other flows. These are called child flows, and it's important to name and organize them according to their type and parent. You can do that by placing child flows in a separate folder. This is especially useful if you have a lot of them because it helps group them all together without cluttering up your workspace. You can also use naming prefixes for child flows to identify that they are child flows. That can be explicit as prepending child to the front of the name or as minimal as using an underscore instead. Use the method that makes the most sense for your needs. The most important thing is that your naming convention remains consistent. Also, writing good descriptions of all your flows can help identify what they do and if they belong to a parent flow. You can also keep your individual flows more organized by applying consistent naming schemes to their cards. To rename a card, click the gear icon on in the bottom right corner. Then click the pencil icon next to the card name and finally type in the new name for the card. You can add a description here as well. As we've discussed in previous lessons, renaming fields and outputs can also significantly enhance readability and make your work a lot easier. Each field within a card may be renamed in two ways. First, you can click the gear icon at the bottom right of the card and then click Edit Card and edit the display name as you wish. Alternatively, click on the Type icon adjacent to the field name and then click Customize. You'll now be able to edit the display name this way as well. Additionally, you can leverage folders to group collections of related flows. For example, if you know there are flows in a shared environment that you don't want others to use, grouping them in a folder and naming it accordingly can help everyone easily identify these flows. Similarly, if you know you will need to export or import flow packs, keeping all flows within the same folder is a great practice so that all child flow hookups stay intact. When building flows, you might find it helpful to add notes. And that's exactly what note cards are for. Adding a note card does not contribute to runtime processing and exists so that you can add task reminders during the flow building process and add comments to help others understand what your flow does. Of course, you can use them for any other purpose as well.